Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be back. Uh, it was a great two weeks. Uh, take some time. Uh, if you called, I probably didn't answer. So most of you didn't. Most of you didn't call. <laughs> um, but it was really good. Uh, how many enjoyed that message last week? Did, how many of you got to watch the message where I interviewed Lauren Buston? Was that impactful? Wasn't that powerful? I mean, t- t- talk about, you know, find the cost of freedom. Uh, to hear those stories of Vietnam, and that was very... Lauren, again, thank you. Uh, I'm just honored, you know, very blessed. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Amen. Um, praise God. That class with John King, uh, how many of you are planning to go? Raise your hand if you're planning to go to that. Oh, we might have a problem. That's good. That's good. <laughs> we might have to, we might have to do, problem. yeah, we might have to do it out here or something. I don't know. Uh, I hope Orla didn't overhear that. Uh, <laughs> she managed, Orla manages the, uh, the building. Orla and John right there manage the building. And, uh, Anyway, oh, thank you, Lord. Years ago, um, I took the staff uh, of the church down to Florida, and we uh, listened to a guy named Dean Radke. And Dean Radke used to be um, under uh, McCain, uh, Admiral McCain, John McCain's father. Um, and he was, and then after he left the military, he uh, worked for uh, Avon and took them, you know, like he just expanded the company dramatically. And then he went into all these other companies and multiplied, you know, like how many outlets they had and retail and all kinds of things. But his, his management method was very, very powerful. And um, so he then got introduced to Andrew Womack uh, Ministries, and he came in and implemented his stuff within Andrew's ministry. And recently, Andrew's been putting videos up on, on Facebook saying, my ministry increased by 50% after they implemented uh, Dean Radke's uh, systems of management. And uh, it was very, very powerful. And leadership, uh, leadership skills and training and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so one of the little videos they put up was said, if you are out of leaders, you're finished. If you run out of leaders, you're finished. And so I'm thinking and praying about that. And I wake up the other morning and I'm like, I need to teach on leadership. So welcome to leadership training. <laughs> Time to talk about leadership. So what is leadership? And I will start, uh, which I always loved to start <laughs> any teaching on leadership with this illustration because it's the most perfect illustration I've ever heard of, and it happened to my older sister. She was in school, and the teacher came in and said, today we're going to talk about leadership. And she said, but before we talk, before we teach, she said, I want everybody who thinks that they are a follower to come up and stand on this side of, or go stand on this side of the classroom. And everybody who thinks they're a leader, stand on this side of the classroom. So everybody got up and stood on the follower side, okay? So then, after all the students were standing on the follower side, my sister looks up and down the line and says, I guess I'm a leader. So she walked over to the leader's side, and everybody followed her over. (laughs) Is that not the most perfect illustration of leadership you've ever heard? It it really happened. (laughs) Okay, so what does a leader do? A leader makes an observation. Connie made an observation. She was standing there, and she made an observation. I guess I'm a leader. So she made, she observed, then she made that judgment, I'm a leader, and then she took an action. Okay? So three words, observe, judge, and act. Make an observation, make a judgment about, 
Oh, doesn't the Bible say not to judge? Oh, that's only for people who don't read the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible tells you to judge almost every situation. <laughs> it doesn't tell you to condemn people. But God gave you the ability to judge, and you are to judge. Thou shalt not judge is, is just for people, like I said, who don't read the Bible, who have never seen all the other places where it says, you know, like, will you not judge angels? Isn't there somebody in this church who can make a decision about this or make a judgment about this? Paul is crying out. Isn't there somebody who could? He said, get the, get the stupidest person in the church and let them judge. That's what Paul's literally saying in the scriptures. <laughs> There's judgment, and we have to judge. You make judgments all day long. You judge how much weight you can, how far you can lean on one foot before you fall over. You made a judgment right there. You're guilty of judging. <laughs> you understand? We judge all the time. Judgment is a decision, okay? Observe, judge, and act. One day I was praying about leadership, and, he, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, son, just desire something. I'm like, okay. He said, desire something. And then pursue it. He said, if you desire something and then pursue it, other people will see you pursuing that, and they'll follow you. I thought, wow, that's really good. <laughs> then I was thinking about <clears throat> leadership. <laughs> I like what John Maxwell says. He says, if you think you're a leader and you don't have any followers, he said, you're just out taking a walk. <laughs> 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 Nobody following you, it doesn't matter. But another illustration is that a leader is, is just the first follower but they're following something that's invisible that the rest of the people can't see. But the leader's job is to help everybody see it. Help them see the invisible too so that they will join in the pursuit of the invisible. Are we okay? I'm not pushing you too far, right? All right. So this is important that we see that you observe, you make a judgment, and you act on that you act on, on what you believe is right. My sister acted on what she believed was right. <clears throat> Some people are, are created and, and made to be leaders, I should say. Some people, um, some people have, uh, I know Natalie and Danny have done a lot of um, uh, personality studies, different things like the, disk profile and the Myers-Briggs type indicator Strength and finder. Strengths Finder and, all, and Enneagram. And all, they've studied all that stuff. I haven't studied any of it. <clears throat> Just tell me what I am. It doesn't matter to me anyway. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I love people. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but they'll, they'll classify you as, hey, you have a tendency to do this. And that's one of your strengths. Danny's... <laughs> Uh, Danny's number one is focus. I, I, I'll, I'll pay money for that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some of that focus, you know? <laughs> Come on. Or at least, <laughs> at least, maybe I'll hire you. And I did hire him for a while because I needed the focus. I needed somebody who could, here we go, right there, do that. Uh, that's worth money, right? Any weakness you have, it's worth money to pay for that, yeah, that's good. to be staffed. Any weakness you have, pay money to get it. That's why God gave you money. <laughs> okay? So that you can pay for that weakness to be made up in your life. You okay with that? So, uh, and don't be ashamed of it. God made you weak on purpose. Did you know that? I thought he made us strong. Yeah, you're strong. I guarantee you're strong. But he also made you weak on purpose because he did not want you to think that you could do this without the body of Christ. You need to be needed. Good. Leaders act first. They're also the first follower. They're following a heavenly vision or they're following a heavenly word. 
Um, um, let me go, let's go to Joshua chapter one and talk about that for a little bit. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that, are we up there yet? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. There we go. After the death of Moses, <clears throat> the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. That's important. Saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. This is one of my favorite verses. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their forefathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you, you, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good, good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, I wanted to read that whole passage because if I start explaining it, I probably wouldn't get through it, okay? So let me, now that we've finished reading it, I wanna, I wanna go back and touch on some things. There is transition that happens. And sometimes when transition happens, all of a sudden leadership is thrust upon you. And it happens. It could happen in the, in the death of someone in the family and all of a sudden you're it. And you're like, well, wait a second. I wasn't ready to be it. I wasn't ready to be the one who was in charge. And well, sorry, but you is. <laughs> That's where you be right now. You're in that place of <laughs> you just have to do it. And that's where you say, okay, well, I got all these weaknesses. Praise the Lord. Get out your checkbook and start writing checks to somebody who's going to help you. Is that okay? <laughs> all right. Um, because you need help. Or ask somebody to help you. Do you know that when you ask somebody to help you, you are empowering them and activating them in the gift that God gave them? You are doing, <clears throat> it was funny. You know how I learned this? Reading Ann Landers. Okay, you have to be over 50, I think, to know who Ann Landers is. <laughs> is that true? You have to be over 50 to know who Ann Landers is, right? All right. So, Ann Landers, somebody wrote into Ann Landers. She was a gossip, not a gossip columnist. She was a advice, advice columnist. Thank you. So she, she says, uh, somebody writes in and says, this person is angry with me and I don't know what to do about it. And Ann Landers says, ask her to do a favor for you. Ask her to do a favor for you. Because once she starts helping you, it's going to shift her heart toward you. I thought, well, that's pretty good advice. I was a little boy when I was reading that. <laughs> um, but then I realized there's a principle there, right? That when I ask someone to help me, I'm activating something inside of them. And once I ask them, all of a sudden, they feel like a different person. They feel empowered. They're like, wow, I get to do that. You know, one thing is for sure, and I can guarantee you this will never happen. Kenny will never invite me to play the drums on Sunday morning. <laughs> that will never happen. 
Never. Never, 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 never. Now, he's asked me to play the guitar. He's asked me to play the bass. He's asked me to play, you know, I can play the piano. But he will never ask me to play the drums because I'm very weak. When it, I can make a lot of noise, but I'm no good at keeping a beat, <laughs> okay? It's just not there. And um, so, but if, but there's been times when Kenny called me last minute. Hey, Joe, can you play the, can you play the bass for me? Yes, no problem. And uh, so I step up and play. When I play the bass, something different comes out of me and it activates a whole different set of giftings on the inside of me, which I'm very, I love doing. I love to play the bass, okay? I mean, I really, really, really love to play the bass. I enjoy it. And, um, and I enjoy playing the bass for people and for worship and for the Lord. I enjoy it. When I never get asked, that part of me never gets activated. And so there's people sitting around wondering, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And they need to be activated. And a leader is the one who comes up and puts a charge, zzz, puts a charge on them. Once you call somebody up, all of a sudden they're charged, they're activated, they're excited, they're ready to serve, they're wanting to serve, they're ready. They get, you know why? Because you remember that song, I've got to be me. <laughs> uh, but they, you, you really do get to be you when somebody asks you to help them. That's when, <laughs> like my son Johnny, he runs around here and does so many things. Like toward the end of the service, he's going to run out to uh, grab me a breakfast, okay? So that I'll actually have some energy in the second service. You know, that's, that's a good idea, we found. <laughs> I start to fade halfway up, <laughs> and I see everybody else falling asleep. I wonder, why are they all so tired? Maybe it's because I was tired. Johnny runs around and does everything. so many things around here. One day we were talking in the family. He goes, would somebody please take this gift of helps away from me? <laughs> Because John, I mean, even he walked in this morning, uh, Rachel and I were sitting in the back in the kitchen there talking and getting ready for our meeting. And, um, and he walks in and says, hey, do you need this and this? Yep. And he said, well, I need this and that. Okay, got it. And Rachel just says, he's awesome. I said, yep, he's <laughs> awesome. But he's acting. He, he, this stuff, this serving and loving and helping people comes out of, he's awesome. He's world class. He's awesome. Okay, I believe in him, right? Um, people need someone to come and say, hey, I see this in you. Would you come and help me? Jesus looked up at Zacchaeus, that tiny little man who had a lot of money, a tax collector, and he said, Zacchaeus? Now, the Bible doesn't say that he had ever met Zacchaeus before, nor that he knew his name. But he looked up at him and he said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm eating at your house today. Did you notice that Jesus didn't ask if he could eat at his house? He just said, I am eating at your house today. Well, the, the boldness. Yeah. Let me ask you this. If I called you and said, hey, I need to come over for dinner tonight. <laughs> See you at five. <laughs> what would your response be? Come on over. Come on. Over. Five's, Come kind on. <laughs> five's kind of early. Can you do 515? <laughs> we don't even start thinking about dinner till seven. Um, <laughs> so you, you get activated when somebody calls on you. You know, I was praying the other day. I said, Lord, it's time for the phone to ring. I was just seeing where I'm at in my life and, and, and the ministry and things. I said, Lord, it's time for the phone to ring. Because there's something, you know, like I feel like there's more in me that has to come out. There's more people that have to be reached. And the phone rang. And uh, my son asked me to come out and teach this group of young uh, independent artists. Um, uh, 
one big family. It's a group of Christian singers and artists. And uh, they're doing a retreat out in California. And they asked me to come and speak to that, young, to that group. Well, I'm pretty excited about that, you know. Um, and there's other things have, have, you know, all of a sudden the phone is ringing. Praise the Lord. Because that's activating me. You know, if you've ever heard, like tomorrow I'm speaking at the Women's Aglow. If you've ever heard me speak outside of these walls, you're like, well, that's, a, that's really different. Why is he different there? I'm not in a pastor mode there. Yeah. It, it, the, the thing comes out a whole lot differently. And uh, there's a lot of, I, I don't know, it's, just, it's different. It's just different. Well, it's activating a different part of me. Who you are needs to be activated, and we need leaders who can see where to set the charges or where to set the, um, where to plug things in. I'm not the smartest when it comes to that. Natalie's really smart when it comes to that stuff of where to plug people in, so I let her handle it, <laughs> you know. But we need more of that because there's so, there's so much power Right here, if you were to think that every single one of us, every single body in this room is a battery full of power. You're not a dead battery, you're full of power. Jesus said, you shall receive power, dunamis, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When you receive power, that power, you're just waiting to be activated. It takes a leader to see it and to plug you in, okay? And <clears throat> so let me talk about leadership in a different aspect. Um, he said here, um, verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. There's a different aspect of leadership that I wanna talk about as well today. And that is in any conversation that you have, you will find people who either don't know about their promised land, they don't know what has been purchased for them, they don't know how good God is, they have not received the love of God, or they're walking into something that you know they should not walk into. Right? You're familiar with all those things. You, my friend, are a leader. And you need to observe, judge, and act. Now, some people are very confrontational. So, Danny, come here. <coughs> Stand facing me. So, some people are very confrontational. And their method of correcting somebody is like this. They just want to slam against them. And, you know, they got to clean up the mess. <laughs> you ever met anybody like that? Okay, you understand? They're just very harsh, and they just tell you the truth to your face, and then this person gets offended. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a hard way to do things, and I really don't like it. Okay? There's a different way to lead people, and one is to come alongside them, okay? And as they're walking... And then as you begin to influence them, you begin to turn them in the direction that they need to go, okay? So you're just walking with them. But then as you can bring influence into their life, leadership is influence, okay? And as you bring influence into their life, you're opening up their eyes to see that down here, actually, the, the road's out, the bridge is out down here. Uh, I know you're walking this way and you think you're going to succeed, but it, just so you know, you're not. Let me just help you turn you around. And uh, thank you. Th that is real important that you can use influence to help someone to understand that there is something else that they're missing out on. But... Again, I'm referring to a conversation I had recently. You don't have to use Christianese to do it. <laughs> you guys know what Christianese is? It's a language that the world doesn't understand. 
they don't have a clue what you're talking about. You know, I'm washed in the blood. <laughs> Gross. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh, you don't understand? No, no, that's a sweetness. That's a beautiful thing. What? That's disgusting. No, no, it's beautiful. Or you're talking Christianese. Okay. You need to talk in a language that the person can understand so that they can hear you. They can't, you know, if they, if they start smelling something that smells like religion or that smells like what they have already deemed as hypocrisy, they'd be like, yeah, I don't, I don't want, you know, I'm just not going to allow your influence in my life. Once they won't allow the, your influence in their life, you are no longer a leader. You've lost influence. Now, this applies in every, every, every relationship. If you can keep, if you can obtain and maintain an open heart relationship with your child, you won't lose them. Amen. If you can obtain and maintain an open heart relationship with your child, you won't lose them. If you are estranged from family, Either your heart closed to them or their heart closed to you at some point. Now, hearts close because of offense. I'm not letting anybody else in here, and I'm for sure not letting you in here. That's a closed heart, right? But we're Christians. Somebody, an elder minister years ago said, oh, ministry will develop a thick skin I'm like, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want a thick skin. The Bible doesn't say I'm supposed to have a thick skin. The Bible says I'm supposed to use the armor. The armor can be thick and strong. I'll just stand behind the armor because that armor will keep me protected. You know, for years, I was pretty good at keeping, at using my shield of faith. And people would come up and say things to me that... If that shield of faith wasn't there, I would have gotten offended. But I was able to just smile at them. <laughs> God bless you, you know, love you. Anything I need, anything you need, I could pray for you about. Just keep loving them, keep giving to them, right? But there could be these arrows of the wicked one, they want to get through. And if your shield of faith is not up, you're going to get hit, Okay. And this was back in 2014. I, all of a sudden, people started talking to me about needing to go on a sabbatical. I'm like, what? I never wanted that word to be in my vocabulary, period. If you needed a sabbatical, that means you're not doing it right. You know? You're not resting properly. You're not getting filled up properly. So I didn't want that word in my vocabulary. Well, turned out, I needed to go on a sabbatical. And I did. Went away for three months. Well, a month and a half. <laughs> one, one guy in the church, after we had a church meeting to talk about it, this elder gentleman in the church walks up to me afterwards and says, because I said maybe I'll be gone for a month. And then it got stretched to six weeks. This guy in the church walks up to me afterwards. Pastor, three months. I said, oh, no, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but I knew he was right. So I was gone for six weeks. Then when I came back for the next six weeks, I was like a zombie. They said I was preaching really good. Like Natalie just said, hey, when he goes away, he comes back stronger. So I was preaching real good. So you couldn't tell. But during the week, I couldn't get anything done. I mean, I literally was like a zombie. Okay. Um, the shield of faith will protect you from, from these fiery arrows that really want to hurt you. Stay behind the shield of faith so you don't have to be thick-skinned because that thick skin will make you insensitive to others. And we are supposed to be extremely sensitive. We should be able to feel people's hurts, feel people's needs. You can tell when somebody's uh, feeling something. I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but... <clears throat> right after Nancy and I started uh, dating, okay? It was right before Christmas and I came home. Listen, I came home, drove down to Quincy where my family lived at the time, 
I walk in the kitchen and there's my sister-in-law. She looks at my face and the first thing she says is, you're in love. (laughs) (laughs) She knew, (laughs) she knew right away. We need to be sensitive. We need to be able to feel where people are at. If you can feel where people are at, then they're not alone. We okay? You need to just develop a sensitivity. Leadership in our lives should happen every day, in every conversation. If you discover, or if you observe, let me put it in the observe, judge, and act, okay? If you observe that someone who is dear to you is not walking in the fullness of what Jesus purchased for them, and you can assuage their heart or or influence them to come in a direction where they're going to start believing, to receive that goodness, you know? It's like, you know, you're at a buffet and you say, hey, by the way, did you try that chocolate cake? (laughs) You got to try the chocolate cake, just so you know, don't miss the chocolate cake. Like we're... What's that restaurant over on 83? Um, Alexander, G. Alexander's, uh, over by Oak Brook. The carrot cake, I took a guy there one time, <laughs> and I said, oh, you want to you try the carrot cake? And he goes, ah, you know. So he ordered something else, and I ordered the carrot cake. And I said, well, you got to try it. So I cut him off a piece. He said, well, you didn't tell me it was the carrot cake. <laughs> he said, you just said carrot cake. <laughs> he said, no, this is the carrot cake, <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> you want people to experience the goodness and by your influence and your leadership, you can lead them over to the goodness of God. You can lead them to the goodness of God. You can bring them by just simple... Um, Boy, I was in this situation years ago. Um, I'd taken a friend out to Akron, Ohio to, um, to check out a university. And I'm from Akron, so I drove him out there. And uh, we were staying at my brother and his wife's house. So one afternoon, I'm taking a nap, and I hear them talking for like 90 minutes out in the kitchen. And, and she's going through all this stuff, trying to help him analyze stuff. And I come out, and I said... I said, hey, what are you talking about? He said this and this. I said, well, why don't you just trust God? He goes, oh. (laughs) End of conversation. And she had worked for 90 minutes trying to figure out his thing, you know, with him. I mean, thank God she was there loving and being a blessing. But she wasn't moving his heart to faith, which is where his answer was. Mm -hmm. And if you can influence through leadership and influence people to start believing. You have blessed them tremendously. Do you love the Lord? Man, I recommend that. I recommend loving God, because I, I mean, it's just been so good for me. But I would recommend even further, or even more so than loving God, I recommend you receive God's love. Just get in front of it and let it hit you. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, you came this morning. Good job. I hope you feel that the love of God is hitting you today. I hope you feel that the reality of God is hitting you today. I hope you sense that the presence of God is here today. He's real and he's for you. He loves you. And he wants you to experience his best. But he also wants you to cooperate with him and start influencing others to receive his best. And the best of God, in every situation, there's something that people are missing in. And if you could just bring up a conversation and start talking about it and let God lead the conversation over to the place where all of a sudden they have their answer. There was a couple... Uh, this was a few years ago, several years ago. There was a couple here in the church 
and one of them needed some correction. And so at the time, Joe uh, Sirafici was our worship leader. And so Joe and I sat down with this couple one evening to just tell them the truth. Or I should say, in a better way, bring them to the truth. Okay? So <clears throat> just so you know, the way I function is I'm not looking at a list of what do I have to say to this person. I know that I'm an agent of the Holy Spirit and that Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So what am I doing? I'm waiting for the flow. And as that flow comes up from the inside of me, I say what I'm getting. Okay? It's just very natural, very easy. So... I'm sitting there uh, at my desk. <clears throat> this couple's sitting on the couch. Joe's sitting over in the chair in my office. And I just start telling stories. Anything that would come up in my heart, I was just telling stories. And then I mentioned a scripture verse. And I mentioned this. And I mentioned that. But the Holy Spirit is so masterful that as I just continued to talk, Watch what, watch me. As I just continued to talk and I continued to share whatever came up in my heart, then I, I just kept moving and we just kept going. And, and all of a sudden, we found ourselves in the middle of his heart. And the truth was simple. And the truth came out. And he received it. And he saw the error of his ways. And he changed his mind. I'm not smart enough to know how to do heart surgery. But the Holy Spirit is. Nancy had a picture. We meditate on this one scripture in Proverbs chapter 2. Where it says he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. So she saw us in a boat, okay? And underneath the, wa underneath the water was rocks, lots of them. But she saw us just simply hearing the voice of the Lord. He said, turn right, now turn left, and now go straight a little bit, go straight. Now turn right. And we made it through the water without hitting a rock. You see that? That was the picture that God showed her. He guards the course of the just. So as you are leading someone, as you are talking to somebody in a conversation, if you will follow this flow of the Holy Spirit speaking through you, he knows how to do heart surgery and he knows how to lead you through the, the amazing maze of a person's heart. To all of a sudden, to the place where you're in the middle of their heart, and the light shines, and their darkness goes away. That's the kind of leaders I believe we're supposed to be. Amen. Now, <clears throat> in order for the church to get a new building, that requires a different type of leadership. Because there ain't nobody needs heart surgery in that situation. Well, maybe people are supposed to do this or that, you know. But... That takes a, more of a Joshua. Yeah. Just follow it. Just do it, do it, do it. And we'll kill anybody who, does, who disobeys you. <laughs> Did you know that's what they said? <laughs> Joshua, go for it. We're going to kill anybody who disobeys you. <laughs> oh, that's a, all right, let's go. But it still takes some guts. It still takes some oomph, you know, some, some real uh, forthright power. And that's a different type of leadership. But the leadership I'm talking to you about today is this type that each one of us is called to do, to lead others to the goodness of God. Because the goodness of God is what's going to cause them to repent. And you want people to come to the banqueting table. This is one thing that motivates me. See this empty chair? This motivates me. You know why? because I do not want to see an empty chair when I get to the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
that feast we'll all partake of in heaven, I don't want to see an empty chair, right? Make sure you put out all the invitations. Make sure you get the invitation out to people. Tell them, you're invited to this, this, this supper. We're all going to have together. Man, talk about a party. Man, if you think fun is fun down here, wait till you get to heaven. You know, Billy Joel actually did get it wrong. He said, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints because sinners have much more fun. Sorry, Billy. You were prophesying from the wrong spirit on that song. Amen? Amen? <clears throat> prophesying to the wrong spirit. If fun is good, it came from the Father. Fathers, make sure your family's having fun. Amen? I'm talking to myself here too. Make sure, have fun. Because you're showing the character and nature of God to your family when you do that. All right.